Women's history is the study of the role that women have played in history and the methods required to do so. It includes the study of the history of the growth of women's rights throughout recorded history, personal achievement over a period of time, the examination of individual and groups of women of historical significance, and the effect that historical events have had on women. Inherent in the study of women's history is the belief that more traditional recordings of history have minimized or ignored the contributions of women to different fields and the effect that historical events had on women as a whole. In this respect, women's history is often a form of historical revisionism, seeking to challenge or expand the traditional historical consensus. The main centers of scholarship have been the United States and Britain, where second-wave feminist historians, influenced by the new approaches promoted by social history, led the way. As activists in women's liberation, discussing and analyzing the oppression and inequalities they experienced as women, they believed it imperative to learn about the lives of their foremothers—and found very little scholarship in print. History was written mainly by men and about men's activities in the public sphere especially in Africa war, politics, diplomacy and administration. Women are usually excluded and, when mentioned, are usually portrayed in sex-stereotypical roles such as wives, mothers, daughters, and mistresses. The study of history is value-laden in regard to what is considered historically worthy. Other aspects of this area of study is the differences in women's lives caused by race, economic status, social status, and various other aspects of society. Regions Europe Changes came in the 19th and 20th centuries, for example, for women, the right to equal pay is now enshrined in law. Women traditionally ran the household, bore and reared the children, were nurses, mothers, wives, neighbors, friends, and teachers. During periods of war, women were drafted into the labor market to undertake work that had been traditionally restricted to men. Following the wars, they invariably lost their jobs in industry and had to return to domestic and service roles. <laughs> Great Britain The history of Scottish women in the late 19th century and early 20th century was not fully developed as a field of study until the 1980s. In addition, most work on women before 1700 has been published since 1980. Several studies have taken a biographical approach, but other work has drawn on the insights from research elsewhere to examine such issues as work, family, religion, crime, and images of women. Scholars are also uncovering women's voices in their letters, memoirs, poetry, and court records. Because of the late development of the field, much recent work has been recuperative, but increasingly the insights of gender history, both in other countries and in Scottish history after 1700, are being used to frame the questions that are asked. Future work should contribute both to a reinterpretation of the current narratives of Scottish history and also to a deepening of the complexity of the history of women in late medieval and early modern Britain and Europe. In Ireland studies of women, and gender relationships more generally, had been rare before 1990, they now are commonplace with some 3,000 books and articles in print. France French historians have taken a unique approach, there has been an extensive scholarship in women's and gender history despite the lack of women's and gender study programs or departments at the university level. But approaches used by other academics in the research of broadly based social histories have been applied to the field of women's history as well. The high level of research and publication in women's and gender history is due to the high interest within French society. The structural discrimination in academia against the subject of gender history in France is changing due to the increase in international studies following the formation of the European Union, and more French scholars seeking appointments outside Europe. Topic. Germany Before the 19th century, young women lived under the economic and disciplinary authority of their fathers until they married and passed under the control of their husbands. In order to secure a satisfactory marriage, a woman needed to bring a substantial dowry. In the wealthier families, daughters received their dowry from their families, whereas the poorer women needed to work in order to save their wages so as to improve their chances to wed. Under the German laws, women had property rights over their dowries and inheritances, a valuable benefit as high mortality rates resulted in successive marriages. 
Before 1789, the majority of women lived confined to society's private sphere, the home. The Age of Reason did not bring much more for women. Men, including Enlightenment aficionados, believed that women were naturally destined to be principally wives and mothers. Within the educated classes, there was the belief that women needed to be sufficiently educated to be intelligent and agreeable interlocutors to their husbands. However, the lower class women were expected to be economically productive in order to help their husbands make ends meet. In the newly founded German state, 1871, women of all social classes were politically and socially disenfranchised. The code of social respectability confined upper class and bourgeois women to their homes. They were considered socially and economically inferior to their husbands. The unmarried women were ridiculed, and the ones who wanted to avoid social dissent could work as unpaid housekeepers living with relatives, the ableist could work as governesses or they could become nuns. A significant number of middle class families became impoverished between 1871 and 1890 as the pace of industrial growth was uncertain, and women had to earn money in secret by sewing or embroidery to contribute to the family income. In 1865, the Allgemeiner Deutscher Frauenverein ADF was founded as an umbrella organization for women's associations, demanding rights to education, employment, and political participation. Three decades later, the Bund Deutscher Frauenverbande BDF replaced ADF and excluded from membership the proletarian movement that was part of the earlier group. The two movements had differing views concerning women's place in society, and accordingly, they also had different agendas. The bourgeois movement made important contributions to the access of women to education and employment mainly office-based in teaching. The proletarian movement, on the other hand, developed as a branch of the Social Democratic Party. As factory jobs became available for women, they campaigned for equal pay and equal treatment. In 1908 German women won the right to join political parties, and in 1918 they were finally granted the right to vote. The emancipation of women in Germany was to be challenged in following years. Historians have paid special attention to the efforts by Nazi Germany to reverse the political and social gains that women made before 1933, especially in the relatively liberal Weimar Republic. The role of women in Nazi Germany changed according to circumstances. Theoretically, the Nazis believed that women must be subservient to men, avoid careers, devote themselves to childbearing and childrearing, and be helpmates to the traditional dominant fathers in the traditional family. But, before 1933, women played important roles in the Nazi organization and were allowed some autonomy to mobilize other women. After Hitler came to power in 1933, the activist women were replaced by bureaucratic women, who emphasized feminine virtues, marriage, and childbirth. As Germany prepared for war, large numbers of women were incorporated into the public sector and, with the need for full mobilization of factories by 1943, all women were required to register with the employment office. Hundreds of thousands of women served in the military as nurses and support personnel, and another hundred thousand served in the Luftwaffe, especially helping to operate the anti-aircraft systems. Women's wages remained unequal and women were denied positions of leadership or control. More than two million women were murdered in the Holocaust. The Nazi ideology viewed women generally as agents of fertility. Accordingly, it identified the Jewish woman as an element to be exterminated to prevent the rise of future generations. For these reasons, the Nazis treated women as prime targets for annihilation in the Holocaust. Topic. Eastern Europe. Interest in the study of women's history in Eastern Europe has been delayed. Representative is Hungary, where the historiography has been explored by Pito and Shapur 2007. Academia resisted incorporating this specialized field of history, primarily because of the political atmosphere and a lack of institutional support. Before 1945, historiography dealt chiefly with nationalist themes that supported the anti-democratic political agenda of the state. After 1945, academia reflected a Soviet model. Instead of providing an atmosphere in which women could be the subjects of history, this era ignored the role of the women's rights movement in the early 20th century. The collapse of communism in 1989 was followed by a decade of promising developments in which biographies of prominent Hungarian women were published, and important moments of women's political and cultural history were the subjects of research. However, the quality of this scholarship was uneven and failed to take advantage of the methodological advances in research in the West. 
In addition, institutional resistance continued, as evidenced by the lack of undergraduate or graduate programs dedicated to women's and gender history at Hungarian universities. Russia Women's history in Russia started to become important in the Tsarist era, and concern was shown in the consciousness and writing of Alexander Pushkin. During the Soviet era, feminism was developed along with ideals of equality, but in practice and in domestic arrangements, men often dominate. By the 1990s, new periodicals, especially Casus and Odysseus, Dialogue with Time, Adam and Eve, stimulated women's history and, more recently, gender history. Using the concept of gender has shifted the focus from women to socially and culturally constructed notions of sexual difference. It has led to deeper debates on historiography and holds a promise of stimulating the development of a new, general, history able to integrate personal, local, social, and cultural history. <laughs> Asia and Pacific General overviews of women in Asian history are scarce, since most specialists focus on China, Japan, India, Korea or another traditionally defined region. China Published work generally deals with women as visible participants in the revolution, employment as vehicles for women's liberation, Confucianism and the cultural concept of family as sources of women's oppression. While rural marriage rituals, such as bride price and dowry, have remained the same in form, their function has changed. This reflects the decline of the extended family and the growth in women's agency in the marriage transaction. In recent scholarship in China, the concept of gender has yielded a bounty of new knowledge in English and Chinese language writings. Zhang Guo Fu Nu Sheng Huo Shi Simplified Chinese, Zhang Guo Fu Nu Sheng Huo Shi Traditional Chinese, Zhang Guo Fu Nu Sheng Huo Shi Pinyin, Zhang Guo Fu Nu Sheng O Shi, literally, Chinese Women's Life History, is a historical book written by Chen Dongyuan in 1928 and published by the Commercial Press in 1937. The book, the first to give a systematic introduction to women's history in China, has strongly influenced further research in this field. The book sheds a light on Chinese women's life ranging from ancient times prior to Zhou Dynasty to the Republic of China. In the book, sections are separated based on dynasties in China. Sections are divided into segments to introduce different themes, such as marriage, feudal ethical codes, education for women, virtues, positions, the concept of chastity, foot binding and women's rights movement in modern China. Inspired by the anti-traditional thoughts in new culture movement, the author devoted much effort to disclosing and denouncing the unfairness and suppression in culture, institutions, and life that victimize women in China. According to the book, women's conditions are slightly improved until modern China. In the preface of the book, the author writes, Since women in China are always subject to abuse, the history of women is, naturally the history of abuse of women in China. The author revealed the motivation. The book intends to explain how the principle of women being inferior to men evolves, how the abuse to women is intensified over time, and how the misery on women's back experience the history change. The author wants to promote women's liberation by revealing the political and social suppression of women. Man 2009 explores how Chinese biographers have depicted women over two millennia 221 BCE to 1911, especially during the Han Dynasty. Zhang Xuecheng, Sima Qian, and Zhang Wiyan and other writers often study women of the governing class, and their representation in domestic scenes of death in the narratives and in the role of martyrs. Topic. Tibet The historiography of women in the history of Tibet confronts the suppression of women's histories in the social narratives of an exiled community. Magranahan examines the role of women in the 20th century, especially during the Chinese invasion and occupation of Tibet. She studies women in the Tibetan Resistance Army, the subordination of women in a Buddhist society, and the persistent concept of menstrual blood as a contaminating agent. 1998 Japan Japanese women's history was marginal to historical scholarship until the late 20th century. The subject hardly existed before 1945, and, even after that date, many academic historians were reluctant to accept women's history as a part of Japanese history. 
The social and political climate of the 1980s in particular, favorable in many ways to women, gave opportunities for Japanese women's historiography and also brought the subject fuller academic recognition. Exciting and innovative research on Japanese women's history began in the 1980s. Much of this has been conducted not only by academic women's historians, but also by freelance writers, journalists, and amateur historians, that is, by people who have been less restricted by traditional historical methods and expectations. The study of Japanese women's history has become accepted as part of the traditional topics. Topic. Australia and New Zealand With a handful of exceptions, there was a little serious history of women in Australia or New Zealand before the 1970s. A pioneering study was Patricia Grimshaw, Women's Suffrage in New Zealand, 1972, explaining how that remote colony became the first country in the world to give women the vote. Women's history as an academic discipline emerged in the mid 1970s, typified by Miriam Dixon, The Real Matilda, Woman and Identity in Australia, 1788 to the Present. 1976. The first studies were compensatory, filling in the vacuum where women had been left out. In common with developments in the United States and Britain, there was a movement toward gender studies, with a field dominated by feminists. Other important topics include demography and family history. Of recent importance are studies of the role of women on the home front, and in military service, during world wars. See Australian women in World War I and Australian women in World War II. Topic. Middle East In the 1980s scholarship began to appear on topics regarding the Middle East. Topic. Africa Numerous short studies have appeared for women's history in African nations. Several surveys have appeared that put the sub Sahara Africa in the context of women's history. There are numerous studies for specific countries and regions, such as Nigeria, and Lesotho. Scholars have turned their imagination to innovative sources for the history of African women, such as songs from Malawi, weaving techniques in Sokoto, and historical linguistics. Americas United States Apart from individual women, working largely on their own, the first organized systematic efforts to develop women's history came from the United Daughters of the Confederacy in the early 20th century. It coordinated efforts across the South to tell the story of the women on the Confederate home front, while the male historians spent their time with battles and generals. The women emphasized female activism, initiative, and leadership. They reported that when all the men left for war, the women took command, found ersatz and substitute foods, rediscovered their old traditional skills with the spinning wheel when factory cloth became unavailable, and ran all the farm or plantation operations. They faced danger without having menfolk in the traditional role of their protectors. Historian Jacqueline Dowd Hall argued that the UDC was a powerful promoter of women's history. UDC leaders were determined to assert women's cultural authority over virtually every representation of the region's past. This they did by lobbying for state archives and museums, national historic sites, and historic highways, compiling genealogies, interviewing former soldiers, writing history textbooks, and erecting monuments, which now moved triumphantly from cemeteries into town centers. More than half a century before women's history and public history emerged as fields of inquiry and action, the UDC, with other women's associations, strove to etch women's accomplishments into the historical record and to take history to the people, from the nursery and the fireside to the schoolhouse and the public square. The work of women scholars was ignored by the male-dominated history profession until the 1960s, when the first breakthroughs came. Gerda Lerner in 1963 offered the first regular college course in women's history. The field of women's history exploded dramatically after 1970, along with the growth of the new social history and the acceptance of women into graduate programs in history departments. In 1972, Sarah Lawrence College began offering a Master of Arts program in women's history, founded by Gerda Lerner, that was the first American graduate degree in the field. Another important development was to integrate women into the history of race and slavery. A pioneering effort was Deborah Gray White's Aren't I a Woman? 
Female Slaves in the Plantation South 1985, which helped to open up analysis of race, slavery, abolitionism, and feminism, as well as resistance, power, and activism, and themes of violence, sexualities, and the body. A major trend in recent years has been to emphasize a global perspective. Although the word, women, is the eighth most commonly used word in abstracts of all historical articles in North America, it is only the 23rd most used word in abstracts of historical articles in other regions. Furthermore, gender appears about twice as frequently in American history abstracts compared to abstracts covering the rest of the world. In recent years, historians of women have reached out to web oriented students. Examples of these outreach efforts are the websites Women and Social Movements in the United States, maintained by Catherine Kish Sklar and Thomas Dublin, and Click. The Ongoing Feminist Revolution. Topic. Canada Topic. Pre Revolution In the ancient regime in France, few women held any formal power, some queens did, as did the heads of Catholic convents. In the Enlightenment, the writings of philosopher Jean-Jacques Rousseau provided a political program for reform of the ancient regime, founded on a reform of domestic mores. Rousseau's conception of the relations between private and public spheres is more unified than that found in modern sociology. Rousseau argued that the domestic role of women is a structural precondition for a modern Society, Salic law prohibited women from rule, however, the laws for the case of a regency, when the king was too young to govern by himself, brought the queen into the center of power. The queen could ensure the passage of power from one king to another, from her late husband to her young son, while simultaneously assuring the continuity of the dynasty. Topic. Education for girls Educational aspirations were on the rise and were becoming increasingly institutionalized in order to supply the church and state with the functionaries to serve as their future administrators. Girls were schooled too, but not to assume political responsibility. Girls were ineligible for leadership positions and were generally considered to have an inferior intellect to their brothers. France had many small local schools where working class children, both boys and girls, learned to read, the better, to know, love, and serve God. The sons and daughters of the noble and bourgeois elites were given gender-specific educations, boys were sent to upper school, perhaps a university, while their sisters, if they were lucky enough to leave the house, would be sent to board at a convent with a vague curriculum. The Enlightenment challenged this model, but no real alternative was presented for female education. Only through education at home were knowledgeable women formed, usually to the sole end of dazzling their salons. Themes Topic. Rights and equality Women's rights refers to the social and human rights of women. In the United States, the abolition movement sparked an increased wave of attention to the status of women, but the history of feminism reaches to before the 18th century. See protofeminism. The advent of the reformist age during the 19th century meant that those invisible minorities or marginalized majorities were to find a catalyst and a microcosm in such new tendencies of reform. The earliest works on the so called woman question criticized the restrictive role of women, without necessarily claiming that women were disadvantaged or that men were to blame. In Britain, the feminism movement began in the 19th century and continues in the present day. Simone de Beauvoir wrote a detailed analysis of women's oppression in her 1949 treatise The Second Sex. It became a foundational tract of contemporary feminism. In the late 1960s and early 1970s, feminist movements, such as the one in the United States substantially changed the condition of women in the Western world. One trigger for the revolution was the development of the birth control pill in 1960, which gave women access to easy and reliable contraception in order to conduct family planning. Topic. Capitalism Women's historians have debated the impact of capitalism on the status of women. Taking a pessimistic side, Alice Clark argued that when capitalism arrived in 17th century England, it made a negative impact on the status of women as they lost much of their economic importance. Clark argues that in the 16th century England, women were engaged in many aspects of industry and agriculture. 
The home was a central unit of production and women played a vital role in running farms, and in some trades and landed estates. Their useful economic roles gave them a sort of equality with their husbands. However, Clark argues, as capitalism expanded in the 17th century, there was more and more division of labor with the husband taking paid labor jobs outside the home, and the wife reduced to unpaid household work. Middle class and women were confined to an idle domestic existence, supervising servants, lower class women were forced to take poorly paid jobs. Capitalism, therefore, had a negative effect on many women. In a more positive interpretation, Ivy Pinchbeck argues that capitalism created the conditions for women's emancipation. Tilly and Scott have to emphasize the continuity and the status of women, finding three stages in European history. In the pre-industrial era, production was mostly for home use and women produce much of the needs of the households. The second stage was the family wage economy. Of early industrialization, the entire family depended on the collective wages of its members, including husband, wife and older children. The third or modern stage is the family consumer economy, in which the family is the site of consumption, and women are employed in large numbers in retail and clerical jobs to support rising standards of consumption. Topic. Employment The 1870 U.S. Census was the first to count females engaged in each and every occupation and provides a snapshot of women's history. It reveals that, contrary to popular myth, not all American women of the Victorian period were safe in their middle class homes or working in sweatshops. Women composed 15% of the total workforce, 1.8 million out of 12.5, they made up one third of factory operatives and were concentrated in teaching, as the nation emphasized expanding education, dressmaking, millinery, and tailoring. Two-thirds of teachers were women. They also worked in iron and steel works 495, mines 46, sawmills 35, oil wells and refineries 40, gas works 4, and charcoal kilns 5, and held such surprising jobs as ship rigger 16, teamster 196, turpentine laborer 185, brass founder, worker 102, shingle and lathe maker 84, stock herder 45, gun and locksmith 33, hunter and trapper 2, there were 5 lawyers, 24 dentists, and 2,000 doctors. Topic. Marriage ages Marriage ages of women can be used as an indicator of the position of women in society. Women's age at marriage could influence economic development, partly because women marrying at higher ages had more opportunities to acquire human capital. On average, across the world, marriage ages of women have been rising. However, countries such as Mexico, China, Egypt, and Russia have shown a smaller increase in this measure of female empowerment than, for example, Japan. Topic. Sex and reproduction In the history of sex, the social construction of sexual behavior—its taboos, regulation and social and political effects—has had a profound effect on women in the world since prehistoric times. Absent assured ways of controlling reproduction, women have practiced abortion since ancient times. Many societies have also practiced infanticide to ensure the survival of older children. Historically, it is unclear how often the ethics of abortion, induced abortion was discussed in societies. In the latter half of the 20th century, some nations began to legalize abortion. This controversial subject has sparked heated debate and in some cases, violence, as different parts of society have different social and religious ideas about its meaning. Women have been exposed to various tortuous sexual conditions and have been discriminated against in various fashions in history. In addition to women being sexual victims of troops in warfare, an institutionalized example was the Japanese military enslaving native women and girls as comfort women in military brothels in Japanese-occupied countries during World War II. Topic. Clothing The social aspects of clothing have revolved around traditions regarding certain items of clothing intrinsically suited different gender roles. In different periods, both women's and men's fashions have highlighted one area or another of the body for attention. In particular, the wearing of skirts and trousers has given rise to common phrases expressing implied restrictions in use and disapproval of offending behavior. 
For example, ancient Greeks often considered the wearing of trousers by Persian men as a sign of an effeminate attitude. Women's clothing in Victorian fashion was used as a means of control and admiration. Reactions to the elaborate confections of French fashion led to various calls for reform on the grounds of both beauty's artistic and aesthetic dress and health dress reform, especially for undergarments and lingerie. Although trousers for women did not become fashionable until the later 20th century, women began wearing men's trousers suitably altered for outdoor work a hundred years earlier. In the 1960s, André Courages introduced long trousers for women as a fashion item, leading to the era of the pantsuit and designer jeans, and the gradual eroding of the prohibitions against girls and women wearing trousers in schools, the workplace, and fine restaurants. Corsets have long been used for fashion, and body modification, such as waistline reduction. There were, and are, many different styles and types of corsets, varying depending on the intended use, corset maker's style, and the fashions of the era. Topic. Status The social status of women in the Victoria era is often seen as an illustration of the striking discrepancy between the nation's power and richness and what many consider its appalling social conditions. Victorian morality was full of contradictions. A plethora of social movements concerned with improving public morals co-existed with a class system that permitted and imposed harsh living conditions for many, such as women. In this period, an outward appearance of dignity and restraint was valued, but the usual vices continued, such as prostitution. In the Victorian era, the bathing machine was developed and flourished. It was a device to allow people to wade in the ocean at beaches without violating Victorian notions of modesty about having limbs revealed. The bathing machine was part of sea bathing etiquette that was more rigorously enforced upon women than men. Topic. Roaring Twenties The Roaring Twenties is a term for society and culture in the 1920s in the Western world. It was a period of sustained economic prosperity with a distinctive cultural edge in the United States, Canada, and Western Europe, particularly in major cities. Women's suffrage came about in many major countries in the 1920s, including United States, Canada, Great Britain. Many countries expanded women's voting rights in representative and direct democracies across the world, such as the US, Canada, Great Britain, and most major European countries in 1917 to 21, as well as India. This influenced many governments and elections by increasing the number of voters available. Politicians responded by spending more attention on issues of concern to women, especially pacifism, public health, education, and the status of children. On the whole, women voted much like their menfolk, except they were more pacifistic. The 1920s marked a revolution in fashion. The new woman danced, drank, smoked, and voted. She cut her hair short, wore makeup, and partied. Sometimes she smoked a cigarette. She was known for being giddy and taking risks, she was a flapper. More women took jobs making them more independent and free. With their desire for freedom and independence came as well change in fashion, welcoming a more comfortable style, where the waistline was just above the hips and loosened, and staying away from the Victorian style with a corset and tight waistline. Topic. Great Depression With widespread unemployment among men, poverty, and the need to help family members who are in even worse condition, the pressures were heavy on women during the Great Depression across the modern world. A primary role was as a housewife. Without a steady flow of family income, their work became much harder in dealing with food and clothing and medical care. The birth rates fell everywhere, as children were postponed until families could financially support them. The average birth rate for 14 major countries fell 12% from 19.3 births per thousand population in 1930 to 17.0 in 1935. In Canada, half of Roman Catholic women defied church teachings and used contraception to postpone births. Among the few women in the labor force, layoffs were less common in the white collar jobs and they were typically found in light manufacturing work. However, there was a widespread demand to limit families to one paid job, so that wives might lose employment if their husband was employed. Across Britain, there was a tendency for married women to join the labor force, competing for part time jobs, especially in rural and small town areas. Women expanded their operation of vegetable gardens to include as much food production as possible. 
In the United States, agricultural organizations sponsored programs to teach housewives how to optimize their gardens and to raise poultry for meat and eggs. In American cities, African American women quiltmakers enlarge their activities, promote collaboration, and train neophytes. Quilts were created for practical use from various inexpensive materials and increased social interaction for women and promoted camaraderie and personal fulfillment. Oral history provides evidence for how housewives in a modern industrial city handled shortages of money and resources. Often they updated strategies their mothers used when they were growing up in poor families. Cheap foods were used, such as soups, beans and noodles. They purchased the cheapest cuts of meat, sometimes even horse meat, and recycled the Sunday roast into sandwiches and soups. They sewed and patched clothing, traded with their neighbors for outgrown items, and made do with colder homes. New furniture and appliances were postponed until better days. Many women also worked outside the home, or took boarders, did laundry for trade or cash, and did sewing for neighbors in exchange for something they could offer. Extended families used mutual aid—extra food, spare rooms, repair work, cash loans— to help cousins and in-laws, in Japan, official government policy was deflationary and the opposite of Keynesian spending. Consequently, the government launched a nationwide campaign to induce households to reduce their consumption, focusing attention on spending by housewives. In Germany, the government tried to reshape private household consumption under the four-year plan of 1936 to achieve German economic self-sufficiency. The Nazi women's organizations, other propaganda agencies and the authorities all attempted to shape such consumption as economic self-sufficiency was needed to prepare for and to sustain the coming war. Using traditional values of thrift and healthy living, the organizations, propaganda agencies and authorities employed slogans that called up traditional values of thrift and healthy living. However, these efforts were only partly successful in changing the behavior of housewives. Topic. Religion The Hindu, Jewish, Sikh, Islamic and Christian views about women have varied throughout the last two millennia, evolving along with or counter to the societies in which people have lived. For much of history, the role of women in the life of the Church, both local and universal, has been downplayed, overlooked, or simply denied. Timeline of Women's Ordination in America Timeline of Women's Ordination Worldwide Timeline of Women in Religion in America Timeline of Women in Religion Timeline of Women Rabbis in America Timeline of Women Rabbis Worldwide Topic. Warfare Warfare always engaged women as victims and objects of protection. The First World War has received the most coverage, with the newest trend being coverage of a wide range of gender issues. Topic. Home front During the 20th century of total warfare the female half of the population played increasingly large roles as housewives, consumers, mothers, munitions workers, replacements for men in service, nurses, lovers, sex objects and emotional supporters. One result in many countries was women getting the right to vote, including the United States, Canada, Germany, and Russia, among others. Topic. Timelines Timeline of women in ancient warfare worldwide Timeline of women in warfare in the post-classical era worldwide Timeline of women in warfare in the early modern era worldwide Timeline of women in warfare from 1750 until 1799 in America Timeline of women in warfare from 1750 until 1799 worldwide Timeline of women in warfare in the 19th century in America Timeline of women in warfare in the 19th century worldwide Timeline of women in warfare from 1900 until 1939 in America Timeline of women in warfare from 1900 until 1939 worldwide Timeline of women in warfare from 1940 until 1944 worldwide Timeline of women in warfare from 1945 until 1999 in America Timeline of women in warfare from 1945 until 1999 worldwide Timeline of women in warfare from 2000 until the present in America 
Timeline of women in warfare from 2000 until the present worldwide Topic. See also The following is a list of articles in Wikipedia and outside links where Wikipedia has no relevant articles which are either about women's history or containing relevant information, often in a history section. Days and month of recognition International Women's Day, Women's Equality Day, Women's History Month lists list of the world's most prominent women. List of American Women's Firsts List of Women's Firsts List of Women's Organizations List of Current and Historical Women's Universities and Colleges A Women's College is an institution of higher education where enrollment is all-female. Where formerly all-female institutions have become coeducational, this is noted, along with the year the enrollment policy was changed. List of Feminists List of 20th century women artists. List of women who sparked a revolution. Timeline Timeline of feminism from the 1940s to present. Timeline of feminism. Timeline of feminism in the United States. Timeline of first wave feminism worldwide. Timeline of second wave feminism worldwide. Timeline of third wave feminism worldwide. Timeline of women's colleges in America. Timeline of women's colleges in America historically for black students Timeline of women in computing worldwide Timeline of women hazans worldwide Timeline of women in dentistry worldwide Timeline of women in education in America Timeline of women in education worldwide Timeline of women in mathematics worldwide Timeline of women in science in America Timeline of women in sports in America Timeline of women in sports worldwide Timeline of women in the history of America Timeline of women lawyers Timeline of women lawyers in the United States Timeline of women suffrage in America Timeline of women suffrage worldwide general family history Gender history History of Feminism Political and Legal Equal Rights Amendment, a proposed amendment to the United States Constitution which would have guaranteed equal rights under law for Americans regardless of sex Women's suffrage, suffragettes, members of the women's suffrage movement A history of woman suffrage, a history of the suffrage movement, primarily in the United States, composed of six volumes covering 1887 to 1922 Men's League for Women's Suffrage Women's Christian Temperance Union WCTU, the oldest continuing non-sectarian women's organization in the U.S. and worldwide The subjection of woman sexuality Sexuality and gender identity-based cultures, subcultures and communities composed of people who have shared experiences, backgrounds, or interests due to common sexual or gender identities Effeminacy, the manifestation of traits in a human boy or man that are more often associated with femininity. Research Schlesinger Library, the Feminist Library, London, the Women's Library, London, Genesis, Guide to Sources for Women's History in the British Isles, Leonor Davidoff, co-founder of the Feminist Library and teacher of the first MA in the UK on women's history. Other demography, the study of human population dynamics. It encompasses the study of the size, structure, and distribution of populations, and how populations change over time due to births, deaths, migration and aging. Her Story History of Feminism UNICEF Women in the Middle Ages Women-led uprisings Topic. References Topic. Further reading Topic. World Clay, Catherine, Chandrika, Paul, Senecal, Christine 2009. Envisioning Women in World History, 1 First Ed. New York, McGraw-Hill Higher Education. ISBN 9780073513242. Ed. Clay, Catherine, 1976. McVeigh, Pamela. 2009. Envisioning Women in World History. 1500 Present. 2. New York, McGraw-Hill Higher Education. 
ISBN 9780073534767 OCLC 192082970 Helgren, Jennifer, ed. 2010. Girlhood, A Global History. New Brunswick, N.J., Rutgers University Press. ISBN 9780813549767. Ramos, Jose, 1991. Writing Women's History, International Perspectives. Bloomington, Indiana University Press. ISBN 9780253341. Ramos, Jose, 1991. Peter, 2006. Gender in World History. Themes in World History, 2nd ed. New York, Routledge, Taylor and Francis Group. ISBN 0415395887. OCLC 61499973. Topic Primary Sources Hughes, Sarah, Hughes, Brady Women in World History, Readings from Prehistory to 1500. Sources and Studies in World History, 1. Armonk, N. Y., M. E. Sharp. ISBN 1563243105. Ramos, Jose, 1997. Women in World History, Readings from 1500 to the Present. Sources and Studies in World History, 2. Armonk, N. Y., M. E. Sharp. ISBN 1315698099. OCLC 1315698099. Ramos, Jose, 1998. Ancient Pomeroy, Sarah B. Women's History and Ancient History 1991 Online Edition Topic Asia Edwards, Louise, and Mina Rosas, eds. Women in Asia, Tradition, Modernity and Globalization Allen and Onwin, 2000 Online Edition Ramusic, Barbara N., and Sharon Sievers, eds. Women in Asia, Restoring Women to History 1999 Excerpt and Text Search Topic China Abray, Patricia. The Inner Quarters, Marriage and the Lives of Chinese Women in the Sung Period 1990 Her Shatter, Gale, and Wang Zheng. Chinese History, A Useful Category of Gender Analysis, American Historical Review, December 2008, Volume 113 Issue 5, pp 1404-1421 Her Shatter, Gale. Women in China's Long Twentieth Century 2007, Full Text Online Her Shatter, Gale, Emily Honig, Susan Mann, and Lisa Rofel, eds. Guide to Women's Studies in China 1998, Online Edition Co., Dorothy. Teachers of Inner Chambers, Women and Culture in China, 1573-1722 Man, Susan. Precious Records, Women in China's Long Eighteenth Century 1997, Seth, Sanjay. Nationalism, Modernity, and the Woman Question in India and China, Journal of Asian Studies 72 No. 2 273-297. Wang, Shuo. The New Social History in China, The Development of Women's History, History Teacher, 2006-39 No. 3 pp. 315-323 in JSTOR Topic India Borthwick, Meredith. The Changing Role of Women in Bengal, 1849-1905 Princeton Up, 2015. Brinks, Ellen. Anglophone Indian Women Writers, 1870-1920 Routledge, 2016. Chakravarti, Uma 2003, Gendering Cast Through a Feminist Lens, Popular Precaution, ISBN 978-81-85604-54-1 Healy, Madeline. Indian Sisters, A History of Nursing and the State, 1907-2007 Routledge, 2014. Pand, Rekha. Women's History, India in Kelly Boyd, ed. 1999. Encyclopedia of Historians and Historical Writing, Vol. 2. Taylor and Francis. pp. 1318 21. ISBN 9781884964336. 
CS1 maint, extra text, authors list link Sangari, Kumkum, Vade, Sudesh, eds, 1990, Recasting Women, Essays in Indian Colonial History, Rutgers University Press, ISBN 978-0-8135-1580-9 Seth, Sanjay. Nationalism, Modernity, and the Woman Question in India and China, Journal of Asian Studies 72 No. 2 273-297. Topic Europe Anderson, Bonnie S. and Judith P. Zinser. A History of Their Own, Women in Europe from Prehistory to the Present 2nd ed. 2000. Bennett, Judith M. and Ruth Mazo Karas, eds. The Oxford Handbook of Women and Gender in Medieval Europe 2013-626 pp. Boxer, Marilyn J., Jean H. Quatart, and Joan W. Scott, eds. Connecting Spheres, European Women in a Globalizing World, 1500 to the Present 2000, Essays by Scholars Excerpt and Text Search Breidenthal, Renata, Susan Stewart, and Mary E. Wiesner Hanks eds. Becoming Visible, Women in European History 3rd ed. 1997, 608 pp, Essays by Scholars Daskalova, Krasimira. The Politics of a Discipline, Women Historians in Twentieth Century Bulgaria, Revista Internazionale di Storia della Storiografia 46 171–187. Fairchilds, Sissy. Women in Early Modern Europe, 1500–1700 excerpt and text search Fout, John C. German Women in the Nineteenth Century, A Social History 1984, online edition Frey, Linda, Marcia Frey, Joanne Schneider. Women in Western European History, A Select Chronological, Geographical, and Topical Bibliography 1982, online De Haan, Francisca, Krasimira Daskalova, and Anna Lautfi. Biographical Dictionary of Women's Movements and Feminisms in Central, Eastern, and Southeastern Europe, 19th and 20th Centuries Central European University Press, 2006. Hall, Valerie G. Women at Work, 1860-1939, How Different Industries Shaped Women's Experiences Boydell and Brewer Limited, 2013. ISBN 978-1-84383-870-8, Excerpt Herzog, Dagmar. Sexuality in Europe, A Twentieth Century History, 2011, Excerpt and Text Search Houghton, Olwen. The Prospect Before Her, A History of Women in Western Europe, 1500-1800 excerpt and text search Levy, Darline Gay, et al., eds. Women in Revolutionary Paris, 1789-1795-1981-244 pp excerpt and text search, primary sources often, Karen M. European Feminisms, 1700-1950, A Political History, 2000, online edition often, Karen. Surveying European Women's History Since the Millennium, A Comparative Review, Journal of Women's History Vol. 22 No. 1, Spring 2010 doi, 10.1353, Joe.0.13 Smith, Bonnie. Changing Lives, Women in European History Since 1700 1988, Stearns, Peter, ed. Encyclopedia of European Social History from 1350 to 2000 6 Vol. 2000, 209 Essays by Leading Scholars in 3000 pp. Many Aspects of Women's History Covered Tilly, Louise A. and Joan W. Scott. Women, Work, and Family 1978, Ward, Jennifer. Women in Medieval Europe, 1200-1500 Wiesner Hanks, Mary E. Women and Gender in Early Modern Europe 2008 excerpt and text search topic Primary sources, Europe DiCaprio, Lisa, and Mary E. Wiesner, eds. Lives and Voices, Sources in European Women's History 2000 excerpt and text search Hughes, Sarah S., and Brady Hughes, eds. Women in World History, Readings from Prehistory to 1500 1995, 270 pp, Women in World History, Readings from 1500 to the Present 1997-296 pp, Primary Sources Topic Americas Topic Canada Brandt, Gail et al. Canadian Women, A History 3rd ed. 2011, Online Review Cook, Sharon Ann, McLean, Lorna, and O'Rourke, Kate, eds. Framing Our Past, Canadian Women's History in the Twentieth Century, 2001. 498 pp. Strong Boag, Veronica and Fellman, Anita Clare, eds. Rethinking Canada, The Promise of Women's History, 3D ed. 1997. 498 pp. 
Prentice, Allison and Trofimenkoff, Susan Mann, eds. The Neglected Majority, Essays in Canadian Women's History 2 volume 1985 Topic. United States Topic. Surveys Banner, Lois W. 1984. Women in Modern America, A Brief History 2nd ed. Harcourt College Publishers. ISBN 9780155961. Banner, Lois W. 1996. Good Wives, Nasty Wenches, and Anxious Patriarchs, Gender, Race, and Power in Colonial Virginia. Chapel Hill, Omohundro Institute of Early American History and Culture, University of North Carolina Press. ISBN 0807823074. OCLC 34590934. Campbell, Dan Women at War with America, Private Lives in a Patriotic Era. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard University Press. ISBN 0674954750. OCLC 10605327. Daniel, Robert L. American Women in the Twentieth Century 1987. Dayton, Cornelia H., and Lisa Levenstein, The Big Tent of U.S. Women's and Gender History, A State of the Field. Journal of American History, 99 December 2012, 793-817. Degler, Carl N. 1980. At Odds, Women and the Family in America from the Revolution to the Present. New York, Oxford University Press. ISBN 0195026578. OCLC 5170418. Diner, Hasia, ed. Encyclopedia of American Women's History 2010. Feimster, Crystal N., The Impact of Racial and Sexual Politics on Women's History, Journal of American History, 99 December 2012, 822-26. Kerber, Linda K., Kessler Harris, Alice, and Sklar, Catherine Kish, eds. U.S. History as Women's History, New Feminist Essays, 1995. 477 pp, online edition Kessler Harris, Alice. Out to Work, A History of Wage-Earning Women in the United States 2003, excerpt and text search Maloche, Barbara. Gender and American History Since 1890 1993, online edition Miller, Paige Putnam, ed. Reclaiming the Past, Landmarks of Women's History, 1992, 232 pp. Mintz, Stephen, and Susan Kellogg. Domestic Revolutions, A Social History of American Family Life, 1988, 316 pp. The Standard Scholarly History excerpt and text search Pleck, Elizabeth H. and Nancy F. Cott, eds. A Heritage of Her Own, Toward a New Social History of American Women 2008, Essays by Scholars excerpt and text search, online edition Riley, Glenda. Inventing the American Woman, An Inclusive History 2001, Volume 2 Online Edition Wallach, Nancy. Women and the American Experience, A Concise History 2001. Zophie, Angela Howard, ed. Handbook of American Women's History, 2nd ed. 2000. 763 pp. Articles by experts Topic. U.S. Historiography Dayton, Cornelia H., Levenstein, Lisa. The Big Tent of U.S. Women's and Gender History, A State of the Field. Journal of American History 2012-99 No. 3 pp 793-817. Fredrickson, Mary E. Going Global, New Trajectories in U.S. Women's History. History Teacher, February 2010, Vol. 43 Issue 2, p. 169-189 Hewitt, Nancy A. A. Companion to American Women's History 2005 excerpt and text search Smith, Bonnie G. Women's History, A Retrospective from the United States, Signs 35.3 723-747, in JSTOR Traster, Bryce. 
Academic Viagra, The Rise of American Masculinity Studies, American Quarterly 52 274–304 in JSTOR topic Primary sources, U.S. Birkin, Carroll and Horowitz, Leslie, eds. Women's Voices, Women's Lives, Documents in Early American History, 1998. 203 pp. Dubois, Ellen Carroll and Ruiz, Vicky L., eds. Unequal Sisters, a Multicultural Reader in U.S. Women's History, 1994. 620 pp. Topic historiography Amico, Eleanor, ed. Reader's Guide to Women's Studies 1997-762 pp. Advanced Guide to Scholarship on 200-plus topics. Bennett, Judith M. and Ruth Mazo Karras, eds. The Oxford Handbook of Women and Gender in Medieval Europe 2013-626 pp. Blom, Ida, et al. The Past and Present of European Women's and Gender History, A Transatlantic Conversation, Journal of Women's History 25.4 288-308. Her Shatter, Gale, and Wang Jung. Chinese History, A Useful Category of Gender Analysis, American Historical Review, December 2008, Vol. 113 Issue 5, pp 1404-1421 Co., Dorothy, Women's History, Asia in Kelly Boyd, ed. 1999. Encyclopedia of Historians and Historical Writing, Vol. 2. Taylor and Francis. pp. 1312-15. ISBN 9781884965 Dr. Jane Wiesner Hanks, eds. A Companion to Gender History 2006, excerpt and text search often, Karen. Surveying European Women's History Since the Millennium, A Comparative Review, Journal of Women's History, Vol. 22 No. 1, Spring 2010, pp. 154-177 doi, 10.1353, Joe.0.0131 Offer, Karen, Pearson, Ruth Roach, and Rendell, Jane, eds. Writing Women's History, International Perspective, 1991. 552 pp. Online edition covers 17 countries, Australia, Austria, Brazil, Denmark, East Germany, Greece, India, Japan, the Netherlands, Nigeria, Norway, Spain, Sweden, Switzerland and Yugoslavia. Pito, Andrea, and Judith Shapur, The State of Women's and Gender History in Eastern Europe, The Case of Hungary, Journal of Women's History, 2070, Vol. 19 Issue, pp 160-166 Scott, Joan Wallach. Gender and the Politics of History, 1999, Influential Theoretical Essays Excerpt and Text Search Sheldon, Kathleen, Women's History, Africa, in Kelly Boyd, ed. 1999. Encyclopedia of Historians and Historical Writing, Vol. 2. Taylor & Francis. pp. 1308-11. ISBN 9781884964336, CS1 maint, Extra Text, Authors List link, Spongberg, Mary. Writing Women's History Since the Renaissance, 2003-308 pages, on Europe Tabo, Francoise. Writing Women's and Gender History in France, A National Narrative, Journal of Women's History, 2007-19 No. 1 pp 167-172. Topic external links Clio Visualizing History's web exhibit Click. The Ongoing Feminist Revolution Timeline of Women's History Worldwide by the Encyclopædia Britannica Click. The Ongoing Feminist Revolution Today in Women's History The Gerritsen Collection, Women's History Online Feminist Majority Foundation Timeline Genesis, a mapping initiative to identify and develop access to women's history sources in the British Isles Places Where Women Made History, a National Park Service Discover Our Shared Heritage Travel Itinerary Women in World History The Women's History Project and the Women's History Project page Increasing Public Awareness to Significant Female Figures from Various Countries and Cultures, Their Action and contributions to humanity.